everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hanani, and I wanted to show you a couple of books that have been really helping me. Um, this one was sent to me. It was sent through Amazon. No idea of who gave it to me. I've posted on Facebook looking for who sent it to me, and I guess that they wanted it to be anonymous. It's called It's Okay to Laugh, Crying is Cool Too, and it's by Nora McInerney and it's a memoir it's really not like about how you should do stuff or anything like that it's just about her memoir but it's been really helpful to me um and, and it's a it's a fun book really it's actually I'm, i've actually laughed sometimes and and then it's made me cry at other times too because it just reminds me of stuff so it's really good and this is the book too that had um where she was saying that it turns your world upside down but you learn to live with that. And that was a big turning point for me, mainly because she used the word learn. And it's like, okay, I can learn to do anything. So I can learn to do this. It's gonna take time, but it is possible. And that, that was really a turning point for me, realizing that um, because I realized at that point that um, I'm gonna to get to a place, I'm not there yet, but I'm gonna to get to a place, I need to assess first where I am right now like you know financially and everything else and really the dust needs to settle for that to happen um and then i need to figure out where where do i want to be what do i want my life to look like um, not what do i want because what i want is my life to look like is to have bill here but i don't get to have him here so what's my second choice what's my plan b for what i want my life to look like and then i can go from there because i'm really good at organizing steps and everything so that i can figure out what i need to do in order to get where I want to go um, and if at all possible I'm hoping to hire a coach to help me with that because I know that that really will help it's it's very difficult to coach yourself um, the other thing is that I've been reading a book and I'm hoping that the cover will show up on here long enough once I pull it up nope okay let me see if I think I might be able to somehow get the cover I can't remember how you do that um, shoot oh I know let's see if I can go to the very beginning anyway this book has been extremely helpful okay it's called I wasn't ready to say goodbye I've got it on my Kindle but you can get it in paperback too by Brooke Noel and Pamela D Blair PhD this has been really good because this is specifically for dealing with the sudden death of a loved one which is different I'm not saying it's worse or better or anything like that but it's different from the grief that you go through with dealing with somebody who has cancer or who was elderly and you expected them to die or you know something um, a sudden traumatic death like a car accident or um, or very very fast cancer um, or you know meningitis that takes somebody in a day or something is is a different thing and one of the things that I was just reading about was she was talking about how the stages of grief that we've become so familiar with were actually written about people um, accepting their own death and you know like especially somebody with cancer or a lingering kind of death and it helps the survivors of a lingering kind of death but it's not exactly accurate for people who are involved in a sudden death and uh, and that that helped me a lot because um, for one thing I hate being put in boxes I just really really hate that uh, and secondly because I could tell that this was different from the things that I had read before about grief and I've really kind of avoided that whole five steps thing I mean I'm gonna hit all those things I'm sure but it's different when you've had a traumatic death like she said a lot of times you go through all of them right away you know and then you're gonna go through them again and again and again and she said it's not a linear thing it's not like an elevator that takes you from the depths of despair up to the penthouse it's it's a maze and I think that's true probably for any kind of grief I'm not really sure but for sure with this um, that it's like you know you you go through it and then you come back and you go through it again and you come back and and just stuff like that and so anyway so this book has just really helped um, I can't remember exactly now what I was that I wanted but I think I highlighted it yeah um, okay so one thing that she said you know that there's that stage of, of acceptance um, which is one thing when you're talking about your own death or accepting the death the pend impending death of a loved one but in talking about accepting the death the sudden death of somebody who 
had no reason to die, you know, that you know of. No, you know, they didn't have cancer. They weren't, you, they just weren't expected to die. And the sudden death of them, um, it, it, when you say that you accept it, it feels like you've put your stamp on approval and said that it's okay, you know, and it's not, it's not okay. And so um, she suggested using the word acknowledgement instead because acceptance has, is too close in meaning to approval. And how can you approve of the sudden loss of someone like that? And um, and I thought that was a really good point. Acknowledgement, being able to acknowledge what has happened and that it's real and that it's true and that you can't deny it, that is something to aim for. And that's really good. Um, she talks a lot about like the different myths and stuff of it, of grief. And it seems like there was something else that really struck me about this um you know it's like yeah the the myth that you should feel guilty i feel like there's something wrong with me because i don't feel guilty that i don't have survivor's guilt i don't have um i don't have any regrets about our marriage or anything like that i don't have any regrets of how we said goodbye or how many times we said i love you it was i'm fine with all of that i'm just not fine with him being gone and definitely not fine with the way that it happened to him. Um, let's see, is there something else? Oh, uh, this whole thing of, there must be something wrong with me, I'm not crying. I cried a lot at first, and now it's like, I do still, I do still cry. Like, all of a sudden, I'll just start crying. But it's not as much, and I almost feel like, you know, it's only been two weeks and a couple of days. Why am I not still just like, completely, completely depressed? Um, and so I feel like there's something wrong with me. Maybe I didn't love him enough or something. And so she addresses that in here um, and everything too. And I know that I loved him. Oh my gosh, I loved him so much that sometimes I worry that maybe, you know, I may have turned him into an idol. Um, and that is something that I'm having to be careful. I'm going to be honest. I have to be really careful about that right now because, um, because I find myself talking to him and I started realizing that maybe I'm talking to him more than I'm talking to God and um, and I need to not let that happen um, so yeah I, I think that was pretty much all that I wanted to say today is Tuesday uh, July 30th so it's two weeks and two days uh, after the accident the one that I uh, recorded with part of the engine on was also today um, that was just like a couple minutes ago so I, I'm sometimes recording like four or five videos in one day but I post them a day apart or sometimes even two days apart because now I'm going to start putting some Bible study things in between there um, and so I, I, I figured if I tell you how long it is from his death that will help give you a time reference point. Not that you should be following in the exact same thing that I am, but it just, you know, so that you have an idea of what happened with me. Um, because I think that just helps, you know, reading, for me, I'm reading the stories of other people's grief and a lot of times it's way different from mine, but it still has really, really helped and it's really comforted me and it's, um, it's kind of hard to explain, but it just really does. And, and also, I mean, you feel like even though their grief wasn't exactly the same as yours, you feel like there's somebody who understands. Um, because one of the things about this is that it's like you feel like you're really alone. Um, I mean, I've got my parents and, and my best friend was over again today. And then um, and I've got like tons of people who are supporting me on Facebook. And I'm used to being completely alone and that's how I like it. But you feel like you're alone alone like nobody else has gone through this and that's not true and so it really helps to know that that's not true no one else goes through it exactly the way that you do but other people really can understand and they really can lend their support and their help and and it really really does help whether you're talking to people who are offering their stories or you're reading stories of grief grief or maybe watching you know me telling about it um, those things just help. Uh, it's it's just kind of hard to explain. <laughs> it's like you've got a secret handshake or something, you know, except it's not that fun. So, yeah, so those are two of the books that I'm reading, and I tend to read several books at once, so that's just, yeah, that's how I am. There's another book that I started reading too, but I can't pull it up quite as quickly on here because it's in a different place. 
um, but it's written by Johnny Erickson Tata and Dave Drabecki. And it's not about like somebody dying, but it's just about like grief and disappointment. He lost his, he's a pit, he was a pitcher, I think. He was a baseball player. And he lost his arm, I think. Anyway, he wasn't able to play baseball anymore because of cancer. I think he lost his arm. And then, of course, you know Johnny Erickson Tata. Um, and so they've written a book that my dad's cousin suggested to me. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically, it's like 365 days of scripture dealing with that. And that's been really good too. I really like that. I haven't checked into it every day, but I don't feel like I have to, you know, I, I, I'm in the word every day and I don't feel like I, I'm not one of these people who has to follow these rules. And if you know, it's 365 days, I have to do it every day for a year. I, I don't feel like that. I just feel like I can go to it when I need to. And it's cool that it's 365 of them. That gives me a lot. Um, so anyway, so that's, I know this is really short, but that's, I just wanted to share those things because those are helpful. Um, as far as me, I've been going through some anger, some anger towards Bill, not towards God. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with me if I get upset at God because he's big enough to handle it, but I haven't felt upset towards God. Um, I've been upset at Bill for leaving me, which I know he didn't want to and he didn't choose to and he didn't cause it or anything like that, but there you have it. I'm still mad at him. <laughs> but at the same time, I love him very, very, very much. This is probably the maddest I've ever been at him. And, um, and in that sense, it feels a little uncomfortable because he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> so it's like really unfair. But, um, but I've accepted my being angry because I know that that is part of grief and that I need to work through it. I need to get it out. If I hold it in, then it's just gonna be worse. And so that's okay. So I've been doing that. And hopefully if he's hearing me be upset at him, um, hopefully he can forgive me and he knows that I still love him so much and I miss him terribly, terribly, terribly. Um, I'm not sure if I shared this, that one of the things that we found intact was his glasses and I found those a week ago um, they had been in the bed of the truck which I found out yesterday meant that they had been thrown from the truck which he probably had both windows wide open that's how he liked to drive he liked all that I love the fresh air but I don't like the humidity so I'm more like close the windows and turn on the air conditioner so we usually when the two of us drove together my window was up and the air conditioner on my side was on and his window was down and the humidity was coming in and you know those two were battling with each other the air conditioning and the humidity um, but since he was by himself I'm 100% sure that he had both the windows open and so I'm sure that stuff was flying out of the truck that way which was probably good because if it was trapped inside the truck it all would have been hitting him so anyway, his glasses flew off. They had mud all over him, so I'm pretty sure they must have been someplace in the field or something. And um, anyway, so, but they were completely intact. I think there's like one small scratch on him, which may have been there before, for all I know. I don't know. He didn't really need the glasses. He had had cataract surgery, and his his eyes were almost like 20-20, but he, he had worn glasses for all of his life for like 70 years. He was 78 when he died, and I think he got glasses when he was eight. And so... Um, he just couldn't get used to not having glasses, so his doctor gave him a very mild prescription, and um, and so he was wearing his glasses. And you know, um, I got those, and I'm really glad that I did, because I cleaned them up. Um, one of the things that had been startling me every morning was getting up. First of all, you know, not having him touch me like he always did first thing in the morning, and tell me that he loved me, and I would tell him to go back to sleep, because I get up really early to teach, and. Uh, the other thing was that I would feel around in the dark on our little table and um, our glasses were always right next to each other and I had to feel them to see which one was mine. And sometimes I accidentally got his even after feeling them and everything, even though his were quite a bit different, but ours were both kind of big. And so um, putting those back there has just been really, really comforting and really helpful. and. Um, that it's just those little things like that that have just been very sweet and very comforting uh, because they bring back just that little tiny bit of normalcy. So anyway, um, I think that's it for today. Thank you for listening and watching and for sharing with me. I love you all and thank you so much for your notes of encouragement and love. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.